Hello guys, how are you doing? I get a lot of questions, sometimes you design and some documents me to review and give my feedback. But um, most of questions I'm getting like in YouTube comment, but when you put a comment like after, uh, when you ask question in a comment, if it is after like one or two weeks after the video, I may not see this comment on time to give you a, give an answer for you because sometimes I'm seeing uh, you put a comment on the videos like after months later, but then I'm seeing that comment even after other months later. I'm trying to engage with you as much as I can, but sometimes I may miss uh, your comments. So, but I do respond to every single uh, question coming to my Facebook page as well as Instagram as much as I can. Uh, so when I get questions, most of the time your question is not clear to me and what, what exactly you're asking it sometimes it's not clear. But when you ask questions in a, a, point, a point form and if I see that question is uh, valid and for, even for the large audience, I may ask you to send this question in detail to me so then I can, I can uh, respond to you. So I got a question uh, like that, uh, I think two weeks ago, and then I asked him to uh, put this through a nice diagram and send me into my email, and I share my email address with him, then he shared that question to me. So now today I'm going to review the design he's presenting and to see the problems and why it is good or bad uh, in terms of uh, going into the production, all right? So, um, so if I say something wrong with this design, that is that doesn't mean I'm going to criticize you, right? I'm, I'm just going to uh, give my feedback through my experience and my knowledge, what I'm carrying to tell where this can go wrong and how you can improve this, right? So when you send a design to me and just be aware, unless you say no, I may take your uh, question to a video and to answer that through a video because then uh, the larger audience uh, might get help. Okay, so let's jump into this question. So uh, he sent a diagram to me, and so let's go for the see the diagram first. Right, so this is the diagram. So we can see we have a API gateway, and then we have microservice A, microservice B, uh, authorization server, O2 server, and uh, microservice C. Okay, so the first thing I'm seeing here, I don't know why you put the authorization server behind the API gateway. Because authorization server, I believe, is going to handle uh, authentication as well as authorization, right? In that case, you're bringing unauthenticated request through your gateway. That's dangerous, right? So you, you let anyone in the public internet, if this is a public internet, if this is open to public internet, anyone, right? Doesn't matter whether they have an account or access to the, your system, you are, you are letting that traffic to flow through your gateway. That's bad. So ideally, authorization servers should go outside the API gateway and let user to communicate with the authorization server and uh, get back to your system, right? So you, if you want, you can put other firewall or web, or web application um, a firewall or something in front of the authorization server, but it should not bring into the uh, inside the gateway. Okay, so now we have microservice A, service a pass the JW to service B, service B again uh, do the JW validation with the, okay, no, everyone doing A, B, everyone doing the C is stay side. I don't know, C don't have any connection from uh, either from the gateway, either from other service. I don't know why C is there. Okay, let's go and see uh, what are his questions, okay? The first question he asking, does every microservice need to validate JW, JWT with the authorization server for every request? as shown in step three and five, okay? I think, let me to re read, the, uh, draw your diagram so you might get a clear picture on how it should go, right? So I think that might help. So let's go to uh, Tayo, um website. This is a really good uh, website if you, uh, whenever you want to um, draw like new uh, diagrams or something like that, right? So, okay. So let's get the API gateway first, okay? So keep in mind, this is just the ad hoc uh, design. This may, uh, this is not a perfect enterprise diagram. I'm just trying to address the questions what asking in this uh, question, okay? So let's put this as an API gateway, right? And then I would place my uh, key clock or any other authorization or authentication or authorization server, let's say O2 server outside the gateway. 
okay so let's say o2 server it can be a uh, key clock it can be cognito it can be uh, your custom spring uh, authentication anything right so i'm going to put that in a uh, outside the uh, api gateway right so this can be within your network we will draw the network diagram later network boundary but outside the gateway right so now uh, you might have your web client right and your uh, mobile clients and all of like the other clients what you're going to integrate with so let's get this right so these are your clients right so these clients might connect with the auth authorization server before talk to you right so this guy also going to talk to authorization server before uh, it talk to you okay so this guy also going to talk to authorization server before it talk to you right so now i mean these these lines should not cross but uh, that's fine fine for now right so now uh, from here you send authenticated request along with the uh, your JWT token, right? So here it sends this request. I mean, this arrow should be exactly line, right? So, okay. Um, so this is a web, because of the web tool and this because I'm recording the screen, it's a little lag, right? So I'm not going to make it perfect, right? So now, so this is kind of a, you, maybe your web client, right? So this is can, can be your mobile client, right? So they, uh, I mean, when the user trying to access the this app, it redirects user to OAuth server. And auth server validate the identity probably from other google or facebook or any other uh, identity provider right doesn't matter and then send the token back to your client and then the client send the token to a api gateway right so now your all microservices will be stay inside this gateway right so this can be ser uh, service a b c whatever uh, you want to uh, name right so they are connected to gateway and the gateway is going to forward the traffic here right so as i said this can go further like for example you may decide to deploy this is crazy lagging i don't like it so right so you may deploy this on a kubernetes right in that sense kubernetes ingress will uh, balance the traffic around the traffic for you but if it is a spring based application probably you are using uh, Spring Zool as a gateway and Eureka as a discovery, right? In that case, uh, Eureka will do the discovery part. If it is a Kubernetes, Kubernetes service mesh or uh, whatever you're going to use, you can uh, use as a discovery part. I'm, I'm not going to draw those here, right? I'm going to bring the point how you should make it. So now what we can do is we can make API gateway to validate your JWT token, right? So it's being a JWT token, you don't have to talk to OAuth server to validate it. Because JWT token can validate, uh, if, it, if you have a secret key, if you have a shared secret key between your server and you, you can validate yourself without talking to authorization server, right? Or else, if you're using something like a Cognito or a key clock or something like that, you, you even can use their certificate, their key endpoints to down, get their key, the public keys or whatever the based on your algorithm you use to uh, sign this. So you can get their keys and validate it. And you can cache the key for some time on your uh, local service, right? You can cache like, you can tell, hey, I only need to send uh, 10 requests or, uh, we did this, right? We did this with the passport. I'll go and go back and watch that video. So that way you are not sending every single traffic back to authorization server, right? Or server. So you can validate that uh, token here. If it is validate, you can get the uh, whatever user object or something attached to the request and forward the request to your services. In that case, these services is not necessarily to talk to uh, authorization server to validate. But you can do this only, only incoming request, every single request is coming through the API gateway. Right? If you open, and you shouldn't, if you open this service, to approach directly bypassing the API gateway, then those services need to talk to authorization server. But you should never do that. But in case if you are doing that, right? So then uh, we can get other ones. Some probably you may need to talk to your services. May need to talk. Let's say these um, two middle services. They need to talk to some outside um, services, right? So maybe you have something like your um, ERP system or something here, right? So your uh, corporate ERP system 
or let something some external systems right and uh, don't don't take uh, consider these shapes what i'm dragging those shapes are wrong so don't worry that so external system right so now those traffic you can send from this outbound gateway right you can use this outbound gateway to control those traffic why it is need probably you may need to limit these traffic probably this external system what you are accessing they have a, a rate limiting with you right you have a package right only uh, 10 requests per minute uh, you can send right because of the your plan what you have with that service provider right in that case you need to limit uh, these services the how many traffic how many requests go per minute or something like that if you want to throttle this so in that case you can use the outbound gateway and they you can uh, make this traffic to flow into uh, this gateway if they need to talk to outside and this gateway will uh, go and communicate that traffic to uh, external system do the external uh, communication with the external system and make this communication happen why we need this because it is always better you have a centralized control for all your incoming and outgoing traffic from your uh, your network right so why your systems right why because if you need to um, check like let's say for example uh, let's get this one the web web right get the jw token and send that this jw token api gateway right so probably you may flow this uh, through to the service right in a header but if you not, if the developer not handle these headers properly, these headers may flow back to your external systems. That is very uh, dangerous. That's a very uh, vulnerabil vulnerability you are creating, the very dangerous vulnerability you are creating because now external systems can see your OAuth tokens, right? So now they can, if, if, if there is someone is logging that, they can take the token and approach back, uh, approach to your service again, right? So if you have a centralized place like this, you can do validate all those outgoing requests you can see and if you if the authorization uh, authorization uh, authorization headers is uh, flowing through you can just simply remove that if your cookies flowing outside from your network you can remove that you can do all the validation you can do the rate limiting you can do control everything what you want when you have something like this so therefore don't put each, each service to uh, reach to your external system directly without going through your gateway so this is pretty much i can see uh, i mean if you take the simplest version of your uh, what you have drawn here right Again, this is not the perfect diagram. These, uh, these lines should be perfectly aligned and nicely uh, drawn, right? Not like this. And then uh, you can have your, uh, uh, yeah. So you can have something like this to mark your entire uh, network boundary, right? So this is your complete system, right? You can see here, so this area is covered from, so this, this small area is your services right hold your services okay okay so this can be uh, your either your kubernetes cluster or something like that oops that has to come up bring to bring forward right so something like this right so this this box can be your kubernetes cluster or uh, whatever the uh, the mechanism you uh, you want to uh, use to deploy your maybe docker swarm or whatever right api gateway is outside that outbound gateways outside that and then uh, you are um, sending this traffic to external systems right and then these are um, outside your api gateway so now you can see nice and clear uh, your token generation and token uh, obtaining tokens is outside you from your gateway gateway need a token so now you can do the all the token validation within the gateway if the token is valid you can just let uh, those uh, requests to flow to your service directly because in that case you every service don't need to uh, spend time to decode and get the token because gateway will decode the token and uh, inject the um, uh, or use object to the request right again these things depends on what gateway you are using if it is a, a aws uh, api gateway you can do differently if you're using apollo gateway for graphql you can use differently if you're using something like a wso2 api gateway you can do some things differently i mean this is a concept how you're doing is uh, up to you and based on your tool right so now i think we answer for your first question does every microservice need to validate the token no and what is the right way to talk to microservice c from the gateway or microservice a Right? So if you want to this inter-service communication, it's ideally good to go through a gateway or a load balancer if you have a load balancer. Because if this service talk to this service directly, right? So then whoever the load balancing is not aware about this traffic, right? 
in a system we talk about the north to south traffic north to south traffic mean from external to your internal system right north to south traffic right east west traffic mean so you are seeing the system communication inter service communication right so when your east west traffic or inter service communication is not passing through your gateway the problem you are creating is the the load balancer or the gateway the load balancer or someone who's handling the load doesn't aware about this uh, east west traffic so the, your scaling may not work perfectly so therefore it is ideally you should let to flow your uh, traffic through a single load balancer it doesn't matter if the inter service communication or coming from outside right that is that is a good practice to follow because then otherwise your scaling algorithm may go haywire as they don't know about your east west traffic right east west traffic mean inter service north south traffic mean the traffic coming from external right ingress traffic and uh, egress traffic right so it does mean the traffic is going away from your uh, network ingress traffic mean the traffic come into your network there is something called regress traffic regress traffic mean traffic comes in um, sorry traffic go out from your network and come back in that's a regress traffic okay so anyway those are kind of a points for a different video i think i review your uh, design um so this is not completely wrong design but this is not perfect design and it is better if you can uh, redraw or redesign uh, something like this based on your approach okay so that's it for the today thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe and uh, click on the bell icon but if you already subscribe click on the like button or put a comment what you think about this video Stay safe. Take care.